Hi everyone. Welcome to the video lesson course Introduction to MATLAB Software. This is our first video lesson. This video lesson provides you an introduction to MATLAB software to get familiar with the user interfaces and software tools. MATLAB is a computational software that can be used for modeling of mathematical algorithms and numerical evaluations. It is widely used in academia and research for various study areas of mathematics, engineering, finance and economics. MATLAB can be considered as a programming tool. The name MATLAB stands for Matrix Laboratory. That means all the variables are matrices. Even the scalars are matrices. So, MATLAB is a different programming tool to other programming languages. As chemical engineering students, we can use MATLAB software to perform numerical evaluations related to various unit operations. In addition, it helps to model the chemical processes for process control using Simulink, which is an attached software to MATLAB. In this video course, we shall learn from the very beginning of coding in MATLAB up to introductory level of using Simulink for process control. Okay, let's start MATLAB software. This is the user interface that you see in MATLAB. The main big window is the command window. You can view your entered variables and history on the right hand side of the command window. And on the left hand side, you can see the current folder or the working directory as well as the workspace. You can change the working directory as you wish according to your work. In MATLAB, you have to deal with three main types of variables. They are matrices, scalars, and vectors. As I mentioned earlier, in MATLAB, even the scalars are matrices. As a beginning, let's get practice with MATLAB. Let's type as x is equal to 10. Generally, this is meant as x is just a scalar. But when we check the size of x by typing size within parentheses the scalar x, we can see that MATLAB considers it as one by one matrix. So one more thing in MATLAB when you enter a code in the command window, you have to type enter button. Okay, then let's create a row vector. For vectors, we should use square brackets. So let's type as capital Y. Our vector is equal to within square brackets. Let's say 7, 8, 9. So that means 7, 8 and 9 are the elements of our vector. You can keep space instead of commas to separate the vector elements. Check the size of this vector y. So type as size within parenthesis the vector name y. We can see that it's a 1 by 3 vector. You notice that I added a semicolon at the end of the command. So let's check the effect of the semicolon by doing it again without a semicolon. So we can see that the semicolon suppresses the output result 
and it avoids printing the result. But the result is kept function inside the MATLAB software. One more thing that we can do is, let's say we want to get the transpose of a row vector. Otherwise, let's say we need a column vector. So we can just type y, which is our previous vector, apostrophe. Here you get the column vector or the transpose of previous row vector. We can also do it by using semicolons like this. So let's type as Okay, we got the column vector. Then let's check entering a matrix. Type M is equal to the elements within the square bracket. We can use a semicolon to separate the rows. Next, check the size of this matrix. So it shows that this is a 3 by 2 matrix. If we want to address the elements of a matrix, we can use the form of matrix name within parentheses, the row number, comma, the column number. So we can check capital M within parentheses 1, comma, 1. That means the first element in the first row and the first column so we got the first element like this so like this you can address any element in a matrix next let's say we want to address an entire row or a column within a matrix so we can type m within parentheses let's say we want to address the first row so one comma colon so we can use a colon to address the entire row or a column so we can check with the entire column again like this m within parenthesis colon comma two that means the second column elements Okay, let's type a bigger matrix and see how we can address desired elements of it. So let's type a matrix, a random matrix I type as capital A is equal to within square brackets 2, 4, 8, 16. And I can separate the row by using a semicolon. I type like this a random matrix and let's say I want to address the certain elements so I type like this so here we got the Decide elements in a matrix. Like this, we can address any set of elements in a matrix. So, as a beginning, we learnt how to enter scalars, matrices, and vectors in MATLAB. Let's summarize what we learnt in this lesson. A scalar can be entered in the form of variable equal to scalar value. 
a vector can be entered in MATLAB software in the form of vector is equal to within square brackets the elements you can separate by space or using comma a matrix can be entered in the form of the matrix name is equal to within brackets the elements separated by semicolon for each row 